It's nine o'clock. I would like to <laughs> order the teleconference meeting of the Transportation Committee for Thursday, January 21st, 2021. So we've been our business. Please be advised that the meeting is recorded. And Madam Secretary, the roll, please. Thank you and good morning, everyone. Starting with Director Hill. Present. Present. Director Mastin. Here. Present. Director Rabbit. Here. Present. Vice Chair Arnold. Absent. Chair Frederick. Here. Present. And President Parr. Present. Present. You have a quorum and you have also become a committee of the whole. Joining you this morning is Directors Cochran, Garbarino, Hernandez, Moylan, and Tirio. I'm going to confirm the staff on the line, starting with Dennis Mulligan. Present. Joe Wire. Present. Eva Bar Furbish. Present. Present. <clears throat> Kim Manolia. Good morning. Thank you. Kelly Hopper. Present. Thank you. Steve Miller. Present. Good morning. Thank you. Mona Babauta. Present. Present. And Jim Swindler. Present. Thank you. That confirms staff on the line. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Um, you know, uh, to kick off my first meeting as chair of the Transportation Committee, I'd like to thank President Parr for the appointment. I do look forward to seeing what our committee can do to help transit get up and running again when the time presents the opportunity, and thank all my colleagues on this committee for their dedication, for their dedication and support <coughs> to the committee, and your readiness always to tackle the work ahead. So, at this time, we begin today's committee business. Please remember to mute your phones until after the staff's presentation. And also, very important, remember to unmute it when we open it up for dis director discussion. After staff's presentation, I'll be asking for any comments and or questions on the item, and if there are any, the secretary will call on you accordingly. After the discussion, we will ask for public comment before moving on. Each page of the meeting packet is numbered on the bottom right corner um, for ease of, of just following along. So we begin now with agenda item number three, a report from the Accessibility Bus and Ferry Advisory Committee. The report is on page three to 58 in your packet. Are there any questions, comments, or concerns from the directors? Um, Madam Chair? Yes, is this Director this is Ontario? Ontario. Just, a, just a little question. Uh, I note in one of the reports there was a mention of a protest at the Larkspur Ferry Terminal, which is not a usual site. What was that about? Uh, we actually had quite a few protests at the Larkspur Ferry Terminal. Um, as uh, part of the Black Lives Matter uh, movement, uh, Sir Francis Drake Boulevard is named after somebody uh, who a lot of feel is inappropriate to name uh, such a facility after. And there's a large statue of him that was there. It's since been taken down and removed. So that was the genesis of a few protests. And also, uh, San Quentin is up the road. And so uh, we issued permits to folks to stage at the Larkspur Ferry Terminal uh, to set up a temporary stage uh, to make speeches and then to march to the prison. So we've had about a half dozen uh, protests, uh, permits that we've granted at the Larkspur Ferry Terminal over the last four months. Thank you, that's interesting. Thank you, are there any other questions or comments? Madam Secretary, is there any public comment? I believe there is a speaker under this item, so hang on one second, I'm gonna have Justine introduce our speaker. Good morning, we have David Pilpel who would like to speak on this item. David, go ahead. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Uh, good morning, David Pilpel. Uh, welcome, Chair Fredericks, and hello, directors. I'm waving at you. You can't see me, but I'm waving at you. Um, on the item three, I just wanted to say briefly that I participated in the November 2020 and January 2021, as in last night, um, Bus Passenger Advisory Committee meetings as a member of the public. And despite the current COVID conditions, I thought both meetings were well 
organized and operated via Zoom and just wanted to say thanks. So. Thank you for the comments. Any other public comment? That's it. Let's we do not have Thank you. Thank you, Justine. All right. Uh, this information is informational. Uh, this report is informational and no action is required. So we move on to item number four. It's an update on the regional transit coordination. The presentation slides begin on page 35 of your packet. And General Manager Dennis Mulligan will present this report. Please begin, General Manager. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board, members of the public. Uh, as uh, Chair Frederick said, this presentation starts on page 35. I would ask if you could have your packet handy so I can kind of walk through the slides with you. I won't, will not read all the words in the slides. I want to let you rest assured before I start. Uh, so slide 35 has lots of logos on it, and those are the logos of the Bay Area transit operators who are actively engaged in ongoing reinvigorated coordination efforts. And we've been doing this since the start of the pandemic. And it occurred to us that we're doing a lot of great work, but if we don't talk about it, no one knows we're doing it. Yeah. So all of us, all those logos are taking an item to their board, either in January or February, just to talk about what we're doing. And there's a standardized template that we're all using. And uh, a lot of the slides are similar. Um, so there, we all made some changes to customize them for ourselves. Going to page 36 of your packet is an overview of the presentation. I'll talk a little bit about us and our program and how we are somewhat unique in that we manage a corridor. I'll talk about ongoing coordination efforts. And then uh, three and four on that slide, talk about topics that are under discussion um, by many stakeholders and elected officials. And there's a renewed interest that seems to pop up about once a decade in the Bay Area regarding those topics. And that time is now, so we'll spend some time talking about that. Um, going to slide, uh, 37 of your packet, page 37 of your packet, you'll see clearly I uh, inserted this slide. It's not the standard slide for all the other transit agencies. Um, but I wanted to talk about how uh, we manage a corridor. If you want to get from Sonoma and Marin counties into San Francisco, it's by our bus, um, our boat, or our bridge. With respect to managing those, we manage those to maintain mobility in the corridor, to uh, minimize and reduce congestion in the corridor. And uh, we spend a lot of time and money uh, to provide that service to the community. Um, just to highlight that uh, part of that is the bridge. Uh, we have um, a movable median barrier, so we modify the lane configuration to accommodate peak traffic during commute periods. Um, we implemented all electronic tolling eight years ago, while it's new now on the other bridges. Uh, it's something that we did to help mobility in the corridor. And what we don't talk about very often, but um, um, our bridge manager, Steve Miller, and Captain Dave Rivera and their team uh, manages the Roadway Services Department. In the last uh, full year of traffic pre-COVID was 2019. And in 2019, our Roadway Services staff made 7,823 uh, calls they responded to. Those are not sidewalk instances. Those are all on the roadway. People on the bridge or on the approaches who ran out of gas, had a flat tire, needed a tow. So 7,823 times. We typically have a tow truck uh, during peak periods on both ends of the bridge ready to respond quickly so we can clear things and keep traffic moving. Um, with respect to our buses, uh, you as the board uh, set the levels of bus service we have out there um, through your budget and through your transportation committee. Uh, we provide first class service. We do not have a standardized bus. Um, our buses have high back upholstered seats, um, they have Wi-Fi, they have overhead lights. Um, they're similar to an airline, but we have more legroom than most airlines. Um, but these buses are designed for our customer needs. But it's important to talk about coordination. We did not do a standalone procurement to get the 67 new buses we had delivered last year. That was part of a piggyback contract. We were one of over a dozen transit agencies in the Bay Area that purchased those buses through a contract that you all authorized us joining many years ago. Uh, that the uh, Contra Costa County connection bus operator in Contra Costa County had. So coordination has been ongoing in many areas, but there's certainly room for improvement that we'll talk about. Um, going to uh, slide 38, uh, you'll see our ferry boats. And it's important to know that before COVID, during the morning commute, 
unlike the other bridges in the Bay Area, people could drive the speed limit on the Golden Gate Bridge um, because of the transit service that you put out there. And it's important to highlight the Bay because it's an opportunity to bypass the congested roads. Um, there's lots of conversations uh, now that are renewed with respect to equity in transportation. It's important to remember that equity does not just apply to fares, but the length of the trip. If it takes someone two hours to get across town on a bus, uh, while someone who drives a Lexus can do it in 20 minutes, that's not equitable transportation. And ferries are a great source of fast transit in the corridor. Going to slide 39, it's important to note that our corridor is multimodal. Pre-COVID, on a busy day in the summertime, we could have up to 8,000 bicycles cross the Golden Gate Bridge in a single day. So that's kind of who we are. Um, Within the context of regional transit coordination, we'll now go to slide 40. In here, we have a picture of the San Rafael Transit Center, which is a great touchstone for talking about coordination. Coordination is not new, uh, but there is a renewed and expanded focus, and that's important to talk about. Uh, with respect to the San Rafael Transit Center, uh, before COVID, 9,000 times a day, a passenger got on or off a bus at the transit center. Um, and it's not just our buses, we coordinate with others. Uh, a Sonoma County operator was stopping there. Marin Transit stops here with extensive service, fabulous service. And uh, SMART is right across the street, and that's all coordinated. Um, over 500 bus trips a day pass through there before COVID. And even if you go by there today, it's still fairly crowded. But schedules have been coordinated in Marin County for over 30 years. Um, at the Transit Center, it's uh, exciting to watch the pulse where every 15 minutes uh, each hour, at the top of the hour at 15 after, at half past, uh, and at uh, 15 to, uh, Golden Gate Marine Transit buses all come together and there's a flurry of activity as people transfer. And smart trains are also coordinated with that to meet the pulse. Um, but we don't just coordinate with Marine Transit. Coordination has been ongoing for decades in the North Bay. For decades, there's been monthly meetings of all the Sonoma County operators. That's now organized by the Sonoma County Transportation Authority, but it was going on long before that agency was even created. Uh, Brian Alby has been sharing that for quite some time. He runs Sonoma County Transit and does an excellent job. Uh, with the advent of SMART, SMART joined that group. And so once a month, all the folks in Sonoma County that operate transit service get together and we coordinate our activities. Um, that having been said, um, beyond the North Bay, uh, Marin, Sonoma, and connections to San Francisco, the coordination has been historically on an ad hoc basis prior to COVID. Um, and we recognize that we can do a better job beyond the North Bay with respect to where we tie in with BART, Uni, and Caltrain. And so there's renewed interest in that. Going to uh, page 41 of your packet, um, that's not just a pretty picture, um, but it's a talking point. Uh, we coordinate and we compete among ourselves between bridge, bus, and ferry. We don't just protect the world's most beautiful bridge for future generations, uh, but we're focused on uh, managing the corridor to avoid congestion. And before COVID, weekdays from 5 a.m. to 9 a.m., 23% of all trips from Marin and Sonoma into San Francisco were on your buses and ferries, which took thousands of cars off Highway 101, uh, off the Golden Gate Bridge and the streets of San Francisco every day. And we look forward to the post-pandemic world when uh, restrictions are eased on community activities and businesses, so people are out and about to grow that transit share even more. It's important to note that um, it's not just about transportation, but getting all those cars off the road provides space for those who have to drive and makes it safer for those who walk and bike, um, and it improves the overall quality of life in the community. I'm going to page 42. Um, transit coordination today, MTC has a renewed interest, and that's good. It's important to note that when MTC was created in 1970, their enabling statute establish MTC as being responsible for coordination of public transportation in the Bay Area. So it's not a new role for MTC, but it does wax and wane with respect to their interest in it. And it's very appropriate for MTC to be having conversations. Uh, with respect to um, the topic of governance and transit network management concepts, uh, many advocates and some elected officials are questioning whether now is the time to make some changes. And it's always helpful to reflect upon what's working well and what can be improved. Um, so there are discussions that are starting to occur with respect to transit agency governance and transit network management concepts. 
Um, I would like to make a pitch that as those conversations occur, it's important that changes not be based on anecdotes or slogans, but be based on facts presented with the context uh, of how they fit within the picture so that good decisions are made. Um, going to slide 43, there's a lot of words in this slide, uh, which I won't uh, read, uh, but coordination is not new. Um, for 10 years now, I have attended monthly meetings with the other members of what we call the big six in the Bay Area, and we're the baby of the big six, but the six largest transit operators. And while the, the names have changed, because originally it was Mike Scanlon, Michael Burns, Grace Klenick, and Ed Reskin, and Rick Ramirez, uh, Fernandez, excuse me, um, the, the names have changed, but we still were meeting monthly up until the pandemic. Um, but we know we can do better, and we're focused on that. Um, prior to the pandemic, uh, we started meeting almost weekly um, because of the effort of Faster Bay Area. And that effort was spearheaded by the Bay Area Council, Silicon Valley Leadership Group, and other agencies in uh, interested community-based organizations such as SPUR. But since the pandemic, those efforts have gone into overdrive. Um, so, you know, we want to grow and uh, increase ridership in the Bay Area. We recognize that some of the regional connections don't work as well as they should. We want to improve the customer experience. Uh, we want to focus on equity. And we want to make sure that we have adequate revenues to collectively do that. And there are some famous uh, missed connections in the Bay Area that people like to talk about, like BART to Caltrain at Millbrae or BART to Muni um, in San Francisco. Uh, and efforts are underway to fix those as we speak. Going to slide 44, so where are we today, basically? Every Monday since the pandemic, uh, the GMs of the large operators plus a couple of the small operators meet weekly, Monday mornings at 9 a.m., uh, and then the small operators meet at 4 p.m. on Tuesdays. Uh, so we have weekly meetings where we collaborate on best practices and what we can do uh, to collectively navigate the pandemic and come out the other side doing a better job. Separate from just the GM's meetings are our planning staff, our marketing staff, our public outreach staff, and others have also weekly similar meetings uh, where we coordinate things. Um, we're trying to look at ways we can engage with others uh, and to uh, do a better job of some of the coordination. Uh, key regional efforts are signage, uh, fare integration, and uh, means-based fares. So a lot of good effort is going on. Um, going to page 45, um, some of the ongoing efforts is that we're looking at how collectively we schedule transit in the Bay Area. Um, there's lots of transit operators. We all have different collective bargaining agreements. So there's some different sign-up dates. And the region is focused now on could we uh, align those sign up dates, particularly with uh, there's a lot of transit agencies in the East Bay that are feeders to BART. And BART has one sign up date, and those operators all have different sign up dates. So there's renewed focus on that. Uh, we're looking at some key regional hubs. Uh, 66 have been identified. Uh, the Del Norte BART station in El Cerrito is one that's uh, focused on a, a, a tremendous amount of effort. And that's one that we're pleased to see on the list and to be the first one to have a focused effort um, because we serve that with our Route 40, which connects uh, the East Bay to Marin via the richmond Santa Rafael Bridge. And then on the bottom of the slide, there's some examples of some of the coordination. When the pandemic hit, uh, Muni, SFMTA, got slammed. They basically cut the lion's share of their transit service in San Francisco. They shut down the subways. They abandoned about two-thirds of the San Francisco neighborhoods. But we and SamTrans operate through some of those abandoned neighborhoods. So we immediately, the next day, began picking up and dropping off customers in those corridors. And it's a good example of how we don't just say that we talk to each other, um, but the day after Muni canceled that service, we stepped in to fill that void. Going to slide 46, um, there's lots of parallel efforts to um, help transit do a better job, and that's helpful. Uh, one of those is the Metropolitan Transportation Commission, MTC, created a Blue Ribbon Transit Recovery Task Force. And uh, Director David Rabbit and I had the pleasure of serving on this esteemed group. It's a collection of transit general managers, MTC commissioners, uh, business leaders, community-based organizations, and a couple of elected officials from Sacramento. Uh, that group is focused on what the title says is uh, Transit Recovery recognizing the huge challenges all transit agencies are facing. 
Uh, they're identifying near-term actions uh, to help uh, manage the system. There's a renewed focus on some of the stumbles that have historically existing on the handoff of customers between the different agencies. Under next steps, the advocates and a few elected officials are highly motivated for change. Um, Assemblymember David Chu, who is a member of the task force, has stated that he will be introducing a spot bill. He'd like to move a bill through the legislature to make change. Different people have different ideas of what those changes should be, and it's unclear what his bill will be, but when it's introduced, we'll be sure to bring that to your GAPI committee to have a discussion on monitoring it and perhaps taking a position on it. Uh, with respect to uh, changes, it's important that uh, there be a business analysis so that there's an informed decision based on data, not anecdotes. It's important that there be a clear articulation and understanding uh, of what are the strategic and economic advantages of changes uh, so that the changes are thoughtful, and they don't have unintended consequences, and that the changes don't cause a degradation in existing service uh, to existing people who rely on transit service. Uh, so with respect to those conversations, I'll direct your attention to slide 47. Another slide I will not read, but this is the standard slide for the regional presentations. What this slide really is about is the natural tension that exists between local control and centralized regional control of decisions. Currently in the Bay Area, we have a decentralized model where the fares, uh, transit agency budgets, levels of service, and transit schedules are set by smaller agencies such as all of you. Board members of the various transit agencies um, have ties to the local community they're responsive to their neighbors and other community members and businesses that are in their communities. Um, so that's the current model, and some folks are questioning that model. And like every model, that's, that, that version of local control has its strength, but it also has some flaws. At times, it results in uh, myopic, arguably myopic decision making. Um, but as it stands now, uh, you set the toll rates, and you have the authority to spend those tolls to fund transit to reduce congestion on the bridge and in the corridor. Uh, as it stands today, MTC today and has for quite some time had the authority to withhold funding to us and other transit agencies uh, to advance coordination and provide better service. And so that's something that's being talked about more. Going to slide 48, uh, the purpose of slide 48 is to say life is complicated. Slide 48 shows uh, just a few of the transit operators in the Bay Area and how they're funded. While someone like SFMTA may get general funds from the city, lots of parking revenues, and some money from the fare box and other sources, uh, someone like County Connection gets the bulk of their money from a local voter pass sales tax in that county to fund transit. Similar to Marin County, uh, TAM uh, collects uh, sales tax for transportation, and they give the lion's share of that, about two thirds of it, to Marin Transit to operate local bus service. While for us, Tolls are a big chunk of how we subsidize transit. So transit funding is very complicated. So any discussion of you know, what works well and what doesn't work well should look at the complications so it doesn't uh, make changes that aren't understood. Um, also, um, it's important to note that while this looks really complicated from a funding perspective, um, it's similar to the complications associated with labor agreements and how workers are represented and their conditions and their compensation throughout the Bay Area Transit agencies. Uh, for example, while our funding is different from Muni's funding and is different from, say, Santa Rosa City Bus funding, um, similarly, we have uh, not just different collective bargaining agreements, we have different unions that represent those workers. In San Francisco, bus drivers are represented by the TWU, the Transit Workers Union. Our bus drivers are represented by the Amalgamated Transit Union, the Santa Rosa City Bus is represented by SEIU. Uh, so they have different working conditions. They also have different pension plans. Muni workers are part of the San Francisco pension. Uh, SEIU workers in Santa Rosa are, I believe, part of CalPERS. And then for our bus drivers, they're part of a standalone uh, pension plan that's somewhat unique. Any consolidation discussions would have to uh, deal with those pension issues also, uh, particularly if you combine pensions, a pension like our bus driver's pension would then be a multi-employer plan subject to taft Hartley federal regulations. Going to slide 49, um, you see these yellow circles in the middle of the slide? That kind of shows the 
the spectrum or the, the breadth of choices. If the Bay Area wants to do things differently, do we want to encourage the newly found coordination to blossom and flourish, which is the orange ball on the left? Or do we want to go to the other extreme and say, no, let's take all transit agencies and create one new regional mega entity that takes all the tolls and local sales tax monies and everything from everybody and takes all those employment agreements and creates some mothership that runs everything? Or do you do something in between? In, in between, there's shown this federation slash executive board. It's important as people have these discussions that they uh, discuss publicly what is the problem they're trying to solve uh, and then where does that land on the spectrum. Um, but Bay Area elected officials need to contemplate um, as legislation is advanced by Assembly Member Chu, what is preferred balance of decision-making authority between local control and a, a single regional entity that runs everything. And then, you know, a lot of the transit challenges in the Bay Area would be solved with more frequent service. The transit connections are tough if a bus runs once an hour, but if buses come every five minutes, um, there's no friction for a customer from transferring from one uh, system to another. Going to slide 50, um, you know, the transit general managers are very familiar with uh, an executive board that coordinates. Uh, that's what we do for Clipper now in the Bay Area. And so since it's familiar, you know, we're talking uh, about that among ourselves. And under that model, everything goes back to our respective boards. Uh, for instance, when uh, you all wanted a means-based fare program many years ago, I advocated that to MTC, I advocated that to the Clipper Executive Board, and then they rolled out a pilot with four agencies that included us, and now everyone else has joined that and they've dubbed that Clipper Start. Uh, for Clipper, we share costs among all the transit operators in MTC in the region. We negotiate that at the Clipper Executive Board and our staff level, and then we bring that back to all of our respective boards to vote yes or no on whatever those concepts and deals are. So that's one way to address that, and that uh, does retain individual agency control and board accountability. Um, it doesn't take uh, authority away from you, and so that's one concept that some folks are advocating, um, while others are advocating uh, things that are more extreme. Going to page 51, um, recognizing there's lots of discussions, we want to share information so that uh, you all can have discussions about this. Uh, we recognize that while we're proud of providing first class service in the corridor, we're proud of having uh, comfortable, fast buses and ferries, uh, we recognize that we can do better. And while we're proud that we've coordinated for decades with Marin Transit, Sonoma County Transit, Santa Rosa City Bus, Petaluma Transit, uh, smart seamlessly. Uh, there's other areas in the fringe of our service area where we could do a better job. So collectively, I think we all want to do a better job. Um, we'd like to see transit sped up through all the quarters in the Bay Area. Uh, a slow bus is not an enticement to take a bus. You know, there's some low-hanging fruit that we're talking to MTC about that we think should be a focus of any efforts. Um, but as these discussions go on, it's important to recognize the tension between local control and local accountability. If someone doesn't like their commute from Marin or Sonoma to San Francisco, they can call me. In the Bay Bridge quarter, you call Caltrans, you call NTC acting as BATA that controls the tolls, you call BART, LIDA, AC Transit, WestCat, with some of the almost dozen operators that operate in that corridor. Um, also, there's uh, challenges with respect for brand recognition. In some counties, folks voted for a sales tax for a specific purpose, and so buses in some communities have logos that tie that back. Uh, a desire for standardization in the region so everything looks the same uh, may create some challenges for that and promises kept. And then to conclude, I direct your attention to slide 52. Um, it's not just a gratuitous shot of the bridge uh, from the 75th anniversary, but it's a reminder that we should always strive to do better, that we should celebrate our successes, but we shouldn't rest on our laurels. And so it's appropriate to engage in these conversations that the region is now having and to think through, um, you know, what do you all want from life as these discussions unfold. That concludes my presentation, so I'm available to answer <laughs> any questions that you may have. Thank you very much, uh, Director Mulligan. That was a very provocative presentation, and um, I and I'm sure our committee members look forward to follow-up.
Uh, at this time, um, do any of the board members have questions? Madam Secretary, would you call on them? Okay. Do we have any board members who have questions for Dennis on this <laughs> presentation? Uh, this, this is Bert. I do. Right. And this is Jim. Go ahead, I do as well. Got it. All right. Director Hill, why don't you go ahead? Okay. It's just a pretty simple one. On page 48, what is STA? Thank you. I apologize for the acronym. State Transit Assistance. All transit operators get money uh, from the state that comes through. There's STA and TDA. They kind of both are bumped, uh, lumped into the STA bucket here. So it's uh, from the uh, sales tax on fuels. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Next is Director Mastin. Yeah, um, this is a good as, as good a place as any, I think, to ask this question. Um, you know, we talk a lot. Uh, we've talked a lot about um, operations and finance and all of that, um, you know, especially these days. But are we talking also about any kind of programs or events to actually get butts back in the seats? Yes, uh, we uh, have a, a very coordinated effort in the Bay Area. But as long as the shelter in place orders are in effect, people are doing what they're supposed to do. They're staying home. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have put together, uh, MTC took a lead in a small video, BART's put together a joint collaborative one that features many of the agencies. And so there'll be a coordinated regional campaign uh, when the shelter in place orders are lifted. Separate from that, focus on our customer base, we put together a video for our uh, bus operations and a separate video for our ferry operations that we'll push out through social media. Uh, but running ads, uh, doing uh, outreach at this time is uh, arguably money not well spent because people aren't supposed to be out and about. They're supposed to be staying at home unless they're an essential worker or they're out doing an essential thing such as going to a grocery store. Uh, while restaurants are closed, schools are closed, and while downtown San Francisco is locked shut, where you cannot go in most high rises in downtown San Francisco, yeah. uh, we're getting ready for when those open, but it's not prudent to do the uh, marketing push at this juncture. All right. Okay. Thank you. And good presentation, by the way. I appreciate it. Madam Secretary, I had a question. Thanks. This is Dick. She's okay. Going uh, we have. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, Dennis, is there any has there been any pattern of complaints from any of our riders where we haven't um, scheduled up where they're often missing their rides, whether it's uh, the few places we coordinate in the city or at BART, I mean, is there any common areas of complaint that you've sensed that we've received over the last few years? No, I think, uh, you know, we're interested in extending bus service to Caltrain, um, but Muni has a construction project that's kind of in the way. So the board actually authorized us extending the Route 27 bus, which currently stops at our uh, midday bus storage lot all the way to, to Caltrain. Uh, we've got a, just a handful of complaints over the last several years about that. Uh, but in general, the coordination works really, really well um, because of the coordination efforts that our staff does with the, all the North Bay operators. There's not, there's not a lot of people that want to ride a bus from Santa Rosa to San Jose. Um, so we really haven't had a lot of tension. There's uh, also been a handful of complaints dealing with the, uh, um, the bus of Route 40 that crosses the Richmond San Rafael Bridge. And that's one of those uh, problems that could be solved by speeding up transit. Um, it's difficult to schedule the Route 40 bus during commute periods because traffic is so bad uh, in the uh, westbound direction in the morning commute. When that freeway was built through Richmond, the John T. Knox Freeway, the left lane was originally a carpool lane. Caltrans and MTC took that away and they said they'd put it back if it's needed. And they haven't done that and we're advocating for that. If they restriped that as a diamond lane, it would make that service more reliable. But we have some scheduling challenges with the Route 40 uh, meeting schedules on both ends because of the congestion in the corridor. Um, that's why getting uh, buses out of traffic is vital uh, to efforts to grow transit in, in the region. But we have very few coordination complaints, um, and we track all of our complaints and we respond to all complaints. Okay, thank you. Madam Chair, I have a question. Yeah. And David, uh, Dennis. Well. Who's speaking? Gary. Oh, oh, okay. Dennis, uh, uh, when you began your presentation, you mentioned the incidences on the bridge. You, you said there were 7,823, is that correct? 
In 2019, there was 7,823. With COVID, uh, traffic volumes are less, so in 2020, we only had 4,552. Um, so there's been a commensurate uh, reduction in people running out of gas, having flat tires, and needing a tow. Right, right. Okay, thank you. Are there any Madam further Secretary, comments or questions? Yeah, uh, Director Rabbit. Rabbit. Yes, Director Rabbit. I just want to say thank you to Dennis for the presentation, and it um, really does sum up a lot of the things that are happening with it within the Blue Ribbon Task Force. And of course, um, uh, you know, I can tell you here in Sonoma County that our uh, we've been in discussions with Santa Rosa City Bus, Santa, uh, uh, Sonoma County Transit, and Petaluma Transit for um, perhaps perhaps uh, consolidation down the line. And I, I think that Chair Sparing on the Blue Ribbon Task Force is really uh, kind of looking for low-hanging fruit in terms of any, if there's any consolidation that makes sense at this particular time. I mean, you look over in eastern Solano County and you have the city of Rio Vista, city of Dixon, um, you've got Vacaville City Coach, Union City Transit. Uh, I think it's really, um, you know, the, those are probably the opportunities that are worth pursuing. Uh, I can tell you here reg uh, locally, it seems to be about a four-step process, a three- or four-step process uh, to work towards consolidation. The first first couple of uh, things are the low-hanging fruit and easy to do, and then it gets tougher as you go. Um, and we've certainly not uh, broached the subject, don't know where it will land. Uh, but I also know that, as Dennis said, you know, there are other advocates out there region-wide who believe that uh, there should be far less than the current 27 and probably far less. Uh, something around one uh, agency um, or thereabouts. So uh, it's an interesting conversation. And uh, as Dennis said, it does seem to happen on a kind of a regular cycle here in the Bay Area. Uh, but I do appreciate the presentation and uh, bringing this up to the uh, committee's attention today. Thank you. Thank you. Are there further uh, discussions? Madam Honest? Chair, this is Director Hernandez, please. Yes. Thank Director you. Hernandez? Um, Thank you very much. Uh, through the chair to uh, the presenter, Dennis. Uh, good morning, Dennis, and thank you for your report. Um, given the spectrum of um, taking uh, Director Rabbit's comments, as uh, you know, some 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 agencies may con consolidate uh, all the way to the extreme of just having a, a, an, an exclusive single new authority for uh, regional transit. Um, what is your uh, opinion as <coughs> to uh, what the out where where do you think things are going? And um, what, uh, if any, dramatic changes might we see as a district as a result of the efforts of this uh, Blue Ribbon Committee uh, now with its uh, energy from, from the state legislature? Thank you. Uh, yes, Director Hernandez, uh, great question. Uh, Director uh, Rabbit outlined that I think Chair of the Blue Ribbon Task Force, Spearing, is focused on just consolidating some small bus operators. Uh, he's been uh, uh, an elected official for many decades. So he does not want to tilt at windmills. That having been said, there are others that are advocating for some significant changes. Um, there's lots of people with different agendas. Uh, some people are talking about consolidation uh, based on anecdotes. And so they think you should consolidate modes. You should you know, consolidate all rail or consolidate all ferry, which would affect us. Um, but you know, when people talk about anecdotes, um, and they use those as a clarion call, Absent facts, absent the business case, uh, it, it doesn't make sense. So uh, different people have different ideas. It's vital that we watch this legislation as it evolves in Sacramento. And it's also vital that we watch to make sure there's uh, not a last minute smoke filled room uh, endeavor that uh, makes a change that's not fully analyzed from the business perspective in terms of what are the objectives you're trying to achieve. I think we're unique that we operate a corridor um, arguably, if you're looking at consolidation, there might be some benefit to having a similar focus elsewhere in the region, um, because I think there's a, a lot of benefit to that type of model. Uh, but there's lots of ideas floating out there. I think we just need to pay attention. Um, and uh, lots of people are approaching Assembly Member Chu. He's a very effective legislator. Uh, so when he rolls out a piece of legislation, it, it generally goes places. And so I think we just need to pay attention. Um, and uh, we just need to make sure that if there's changes that uh, you have the opportunity to review them, to understand them, um, and to uh, understand the uh, the facts that would support uh, any proposed changes. At this time, no one's mentioned us publicly, um, but I know a lot of conversations are occurring uh, outside the, the public scrutiny. 
Thank you, um, Dennis. Are there any other questions from the board committee? I'm hearing none. Um, I, I do have a much smaller, less inspirational focus question, and that is, will, will this work of coordination give uh, the transit agencies a little more heft in the long term when they have to deal with any funding deficits that may come across because um, of the decrease in fuel tax as we get more fuel efficient vehicles on the road? Uh, yes, that is an area where we've coordinated for a long time very effectively. Um, all the transit operators in the Bay Area, in California, and across the country. And so, uh, but uh, certainly we're spending a lot of time together and we've had lots of conversations about funding. A lot of the problems that exist out there for customers could be solved with additional money. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, are there any yeah. further questions or comments? I'm hearing none. Madam Secretary, is there any public comment? We do have one speaker on this item. I am going to have Justine invite our speaker. Good morning, thank you. Good morning, thank you. Our first speaker is David Pilpel. Mr. Pilpel, go ahead. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Great, uh, David Pilpel again, good morning. I have a number of comments on this. I'll try to keep it to two, but I might actually need three minutes. Um, so first, I thank staff for bringing this item forward. It is both <clears throat> important and timely for the region and, <clears throat> sorry, and for the district. The district, through the general manager, continues to be uh, quite active in regional coordination efforts. The uh, MTC Blue Ribbon Transit Recovery Task Force meets again uh, this coming Monday, January 25th. Um, this whole area about regional coordination is not a new topic for me. I have followed and participated in these efforts for many years. In fact, I've been around so long, I actually served as an alternate member on MTC's Regional Transit Productivity Committee, which existed in the late 1980s. Um, since then, a number of MTC and agency staff, including district staff, I remember meetings with Alan and Jerome and all kinds of people, um, have, uh, have worked on regional transit coordination over the years. Past uh, studies, there have been a number of past studies, um, have looked at regional hubs and improved fare schedule and information coordination. Um, one example is the uh, signage at uh, San Rafael Transit Center. That was part of a, a regional information coordination uh, project. Um, I appreciate the tension between coordination or consolidation and local control, as was on one of the slides, um, including uh, issues with uh, labor uh, that include 13C and <clears throat> uh, pensions and uh, jurisdiction, all kinds of things. For the network issue, I would designate regional and non-regional routes and focus on the regional routes. Um, clearly, the district has a number of regional routes. The, I would say the, the 101 in particular, but um, well, the 40 as well, arguably the 30 and the 70, et cetera. <clears throat> I would pursue near-term opportunities, including uh, Solano and Sonoma counties, as uh, was referenced, um, and identify longer-term ones. And I would suggest that uh, joint exercise of powers uh, agreements may be uh, a vehicle that, sorry, an opportunity. I'm not sure I want to say vehicle again. Um, to, to achieve that. Uh, San Francisco set up a late night transportation working group a few years ago that I served on. Uh, that may be a good example of a, a useful body that had um, policymakers, representatives from uh, operators, um, riders, advocates, people like me, um, and that was a, a useful group. Uh, the district was included in that. Um, I would like to be involved in these efforts uh, going forward. I think it would be a good use of my time. Uh, Golden Gate Ferry and Golden Gate Transit have a number of coordination opportunities. Uh, the general manager talked about some of those, um, and I'd be happy to help with that. I think it's important uh, to remember that the district's interest in operating transit in this corridor is in relation to um, managing and minimizing congestion in the 101 corridor. So it really starts with that as uh, a principle for the district. Um, and just finally, uh, district service in... Uh, mm -hmm. 
district transit service in San Francisco, um, the open door service is now operating on Lombard and Van Ness, um, is a good example um, of coordination, but it currently uh, still has a different and higher fare than Muni, and that's something that can be addressed the next time uh, the district uh, reviews its transit fares. Happy to talk okay. more about this anytime. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Fettel. Um We move on now. Um, that concludes our discussion of item number four. Agenda number five, um, and I should remark that no action is required on agenda item four. So agenda item five is the monthly report on bridge traffic, transit ridership trends, and transit purpose performance. The staff report begins on page three. Dennis, do you have anything to report related to this item? Uh, no, it's the uh, same information report every month. Uh, things are pretty flat. Uh, since the increased shelter in place order restrictions were placed, such as you know, closing restaurants even for outdoor dining, we've seen a, a further decline in travel in the corridor. And things will remain depressed until everyone's vaccinated and they feel safe going out and about. And the shelter in place orders lift the restrictions on uh, businesses and community activities. Thank you. Are there any questions, comments, or concerns from the directors on agenda item five? <coughs> Madam Secretary, do you hear anybody? I'm going to, no one here, and I'm going to pull the public line to see if there are any speakers under item five. So give us one second. Thank you. We have no speakers under item five. Thank you, Madam Secretary. So uh, item five is an informational report. No action is required. We move now to agenda item six. It's an informational report, monthly report, on activities related to Marin Transit. Dennis, do you have anything? Uh, nope. Uh, the relationship is uh, ongoing. It's a very fruitful relationship for all parties. Uh, there's incredible coordination going on on managing travel on the 101 corridor for local trips within Marin between our regional buses and their local service. And uh, our contract with them will be up, and MTC, uh, Marin Transit has reached out to us to ask that we start the process to have the negotiations and discussions on a new contract to continue the relationship. So we'll be talking to you more about that at future meetings, and I have nothing else to report. Thank you very much. Are there any comments or questions from board members? I'm hearing none, Madam Secretary. Any public comment? Thank you. We're going to be uh, polling for this item and also anyone who wants to address the committee under item number seven under public comment. So give us one second. <laughs> Thank you. We have no speakers under item number six, but we do have David Pilpel back on for item number seven, public comments. Go ahead, Justine, and introduce Mr. Pilpel. Good morning, David. Go ahead. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay. Sorry, the, the mute thing is a little thick. We're good. Um, so for item seven, uh, I look forward to an update on the San Rafael uh, Transit Center project at a future uh, committee meeting. I understand that the draft DIR is um, in the works coming this spring to a district near us. Um, thinking back to um, item four just for a moment, I think it may be useful uh, to hear about the Sonoma County Transportation uh, Agency uh, coordination efforts. I think they have a study that's been underway and there's uh, something moving on that in the next couple of months it might be helpful to um, bring that forward. Um, I hope that 
uh, transit service uh, restoration plans are being uh, prepared at the district. I continue to worry that having um, very little uh, bus service um, out um, in particularly in Marin and Sonoma counties um, doesn't portend well that people will see that there's no bus and think, well, there's there's no bus. We used to have uh, service in uh, Lucas Valley and around uh, uh, Novato and uh, Ross Valley, et, et cetera, and there just isn't any. Maybe it'll never come back, blah, blah, blah. I think it would I think it's very important to have plans and to um, uh, restore service as demand uh, warrants. I'm, I'm very concerned about that. Um, and at the same time, I think it would be good to try some new things, um, given that there are operators and vehicles available now. So the there may be things that the, the planners and, and schedules and operations people have wanted to do for years, but there weren't uh, resources to try them. Um, I think as we bring things back, uh, it may be a good opportunity to try those new things and uh, see if they take hold and what the public uh, response and, and reaction and uses uh, to new services. Thanks very much. Uh, thank you for your comments. Is there any further public comment? We have Hello? no other speakers. No other speakers. May I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved. And a second. Second, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. If no one is opposed, this concludes the meeting of the Transportation Committee of Golden Gate Bridge Highway and Transit District at 9.52 a.m.